most of you know that it is thanks to the love and support of this community that we were able to build a village for special needs children out in Tanzania. That village now provides a safe and loving home to nearly 200 children that were living in crisis. Most of these children are special needs, but a lot of these children were homeless and the majority have no parents or guardians in this world other than the family that this community has allowed us to create. Everything that we do is made possible thanks to partners. Those who choose to partner with our family and with it make everything that we do possible and keep our doors open for the next children who need some help or a safe and loving family home. If you'd like to hear more about our partnership programme, you can do so by visiting www.sharetanzania.com forward slash partnership. Thank you for all of the love and support, guys. We couldn't do this without you. I want to speak into a topic that is definitely affecting the lives of every human being that can hear my voice right now. And that topic is something that I've begun to call the satanic dopamine blanket. Cheap dopamine. Cheap dopamine is everywhere. We have invited it into our family lives, into our family home, and we have deemed it to be harmless as we've done so. We have placed it in the hands of our children and we are beginning to suffer immensely in our sanity collectively due to it. Cheap dopamine is a drug that is sold to you. And when you take that drug, you forget your dreams, you forget your destiny, you forget your righteousness and you forget your power. This is a very serious spiritual warfare. Cheap dopamine is an immensely powerful spiritual warfare inside the human story. And so I want to speak into this and everything I can see about it and how it is that the influence behind this, if you are among this community, the vast majority know that there is a spiritual dimension that is interacting with the human story. And in that dimension you have the angelic, which is leading us back home to our comfort, our protection, our support in a world which is not as it should be. But you also have the fallen and the demonic, who are misleading humanity based upon the sojourn of a powerful consciousness, a powerful conscious being that we have labelled Satan. A being that has manifested in separation inside the field of all creation and in manifesting in that separation lacks compassion empathy and wishes to be god and to be god the goal is to simply get humanity to offer their energy in worship to that fallen force this is something that many have a knowing of or a belief of but for this video you will need to be able to be with me, to, to follow what I am saying, to acknowledge the possibility, the what if, even if you are not knowing, even if you're toying with the belief, or if you're completely on the fence, the what if that that's a possibility, that there are other dimensional forces involved in this situation. Now, if you are Christian, Yeshua spent one third of his ministry dealing with other dimensional forces called demons. And so to use a very common teaching, because no matter what faith you are from, you will likely know the words of Yeshua in some format. Yeshua determined that a human can live in two spheres. Christ said there are two paths a human can walk. One is in the spirit and one is in the flesh. The spirit is a human that is hearing and connecting to the voice of its creator. It is not in separation. It is not in anxiety and fear. And it moves from an inner place 
and that inner place gives birth to a great compassion for in that inner place there's a sense of profound unity with everything including your fellow man this is to walk in spirit and so in that place you are operating from an inner connection to your soul and its connection to the creator in the flesh you are walking based upon the impulse of your five senses and your mind is your master and the body can even be the master of that mind in the spirit something deeper a connection to your soul is the master of your mind now of course cheap dopamine pulls us into that flesh it stimulates us and drags our attention into the flesh so it pulls you away from spirit by its very nature and design now what do i mean by cheap dopamine because this is important when you understand what i am saying in the spiritual consequences i hope i've set a foundation cheap dopamine is scrolling on your phone it is the junk food in your cupboard which has been engineered to have the correct balance of sugar salt and fat to excite your dopamine centers it is the endless swathes of entertainment some of it wholesome some of it an adrenaline rush some of it unfortunately which i wouldn't call it entertainment things like pornography gambling things that have been around a long time are prostitution and gambling which are part of the dopamine affliction of man but cheap dopamine that is truly affecting humanity right now one of the biggest is of course the smartphone scrolling the reels the short attention span videos and this cheap dopamine when you adopt it into your life as harmless there is unfortunately the guarantee that it is going to disable your capacity as a being to attain the destiny that spirit has for you it's also going to do the same to your children if a child has a true dream a righteous dream when you ask a young man these days what do you want to be when you grow up very few will say i want to be one who protects provides safety i want to be the type of man that when i'm in a room with people they feel safe i want to be a good father that's that's safe for children feel safe around me women feel safe around me very few young men have such a dream and such a dream would come from spirit a righteous dream would come from a connection to spirit the majority these days their dreams have been hijacked and they've been programmed with the notion that by attaining their worldly desires they will find joy fulfillment and success as a man cheap dopamine and scrolling for example no matter what dream you are dreaming will take it from you there are indeed those who pursue the false image of freedom that attaining your every worldly desire is it but they will not achieve high levels of achievement if they are exchanging cheap dopamine and they can achieve high levels of achievement because the the god of this world the ruler of this world satan wants more of this this perversion in the species because it serves his ends it wants men who build pornography companies because it serves his ends and so will reward him materially for that but if you take a young man with a righteous dream and give him a smartphone the cheap dopamine can still take his righteous dream but at the same time it's programming him with this false dream with this worldly dream that many are afflicted with true freedom true power is not to attain your worldly desires it's to overcome worldly desire and move from the spirit it's to overcome the flesh where worldly desire is and live from the spirit and so our children are becoming restricted in their ability and not only that they are being farmed by this cheap dopamine 
The infinite scroll, the reels, they are designed not with the well-being of humanity in mind, not with thinking of others before self, which is the spirit path. They are the flesh path. They are selfish in their origin. It's profit-based. It is designed to take the attention of your child, keep it on that screen as long as possible, and then sell that attention to advertisers. It is to the mind of a CEO or a board of directors, it is a state of profiteering from human attention. But here's the issue, is that just because you are a CEO and you have no spiritual belief, or you are a board of directors and have no spiritual belief, if you are not openly aware that there are other dimensional forces uh, afflicting humanity, if you are not part of a secret society or a ruling class, you can still be manipulated from that other dimension. You are still suggestible from that other dimension. And therefore, some of these parties can be serving the bidding of the sojourn of the fallen ones and not realize it. Now, as you look around on our planet, there is a certain ruling class that is present. And there are those who know, they are very aware that there is another dimensional force that we have labeled satanic, that has this want to not surrender to the generous heart of God, but to supersede it. It wishes not to be in thanksgiving for the gift of life and intelligence and consciousness that God has offered. It wishes itself to be God, not surrender to it. There are humans here and other sentient life, I dare to say, are present in this cosmos who are in communication with this other dimension. And there is a lot of discussion that this energy extraction of humanity's essence to make us worship Satan's creation and not give thanks to the Creator is under management for a long time on planet Earth. Now if you look at the generous heart of God pouring forth all creation, infinite potential, free will, and in the integrity of setting forth life, has not altered the, the, the rules, has not altered the schematics for creation, even though there is this state of rebellion challenging it. And so inside that field has started the separation and the want to be God itself. This arrogant, prideful fall is denoted as Lucifer falling from the heavens as an angel and the angels that fell with him. If you look around the world, if you need to harness the energy of God, you can use technology. The sun can be harnessed using solar panels and we can turn that into a usable energy. We have a, a primitive understanding of that. But it's very clear that Satan wants a different energy also. And that energy is the soul essence of man. Where's the solar panel for that? Where, where's the solar panel to get the soul essence of man? And this is an interesting question because if humans are having such benefit from technology, why would we believe there is sentient life in the form of the demonic, the fallen angels, who they themselves would not pursue technology? We are receiving great benefit from technology. We have the water systems, the, the transport, this platform, the wheelchairs that we use for the kids. Technology is phenomenal when it is used with others in mind before self. 
but when it is used from the foundation of self before other, there we build war machines and new ways to kill one another, and technology can be very dark, because the heart of the creator of that technology is darkened. It's in separation and fear. It's not in unity. When we build from unity, we build very differently. Our collective intelligence, the machine of collective intelligence, if it builds in unity, would not be building war generation after generation for thousands of years. We need to overcome this separation and fear if we are to see the change that we hope to see from the output of our intelligence. So where is the notion in humanity that the fallen ones, the demonic, will have technology? Few discuss it. But I say that undoubtedly they do and they will have it. And if their goal is to have mankind worship the fallen elements of creation, to, to harness the energy of the soul essence of man, then where is the solar panel? Where's the solar panel that's collecting that and feeding it into the work of Satan to challenge the heavens yet again to try to be God itself or to be a false creator God, to start to gain as much capacity to create as God does through intellectual analysis and dissection of the generous heart of God, which we have due to free will and infinite potential, the opportunity to do here. We can dissect this reality, which is the creation field of God, and we can mimic it, which we as a species are also doing. Where's the solar panel? And as you look around, there's these peculiar networks inside our cities around the world. There's peculiar architecture, which looks similar. And there are peculiar, at the same time now, ability to see that humanity is everywhere, every country, looking at a smartphone. We are now all looking at the same place. When we are looking at these things, the whole point of dragging you into your flesh, spiritually speaking, is there you become vulnerable to perversion. And when you go into perversion, you yourself, as the light of God, fall into the catchment of their extraction. And we have called that sin. The flesh is the home of sin. Cheap dopamine drags you into the flesh. When you are governed by the flesh, the ancients said it was the giant Goliath. This is why David took five rounded stones, five was an important number, the five senses. And he defeated the giant by striking him here. He overcame the five senses as his master, mind as master, flesh as master. And in doing so, retained the sacred essence of the gift of life and his awareness. He had enough energy for his awareness to sit at the seat of the soul where we connect with God, with spirit, which is the pineal gland here. For I have seen God face to face, as Jacob said and I call that place Peniel. Every culture around the world has denoted this area. This is a reference to living in spirit, in temperance, in righteousness. Your energy will naturally collect and it will raise in your body and you will dwell from the awareness of the Christ within you, the seat of the soul, and it's represented in the temple of God here. So here we are, facing off with cheap dopamine. Now, if the fallen ones have technology, and if we are to open our minds to the what if, that there is sentient life all around this universe, I know for a fact as a man, I have no doubt, that there is sentient life beyond humans in other dimensions and on other planets. I know because I have seen a craft which far exceeds any type of human technology that you have ever seen. I know because I have seen them when I have gone into prayer and through no pushing, seeking or searching, just praying in spirit as I do, that I've had moments where God has checked me out of my body. Indeed, it was a time 
last year where I made a video saying, am I even authentic as I was having a crisis of authenticity? My mind was interfering with my output of content. I kept feeling I couldn't speak about this or this because it might harm the charity and our image. And I was not authentic. And I had this crisis and I fell on my knees and I said, whatever comes, I will talk about. The next thing that happened the following day was I left my body in prayer and I appeared in the midst of these beings from another dimension who I recognize as afflicting humanity. I recognize them from my deliverance work. And so who are these fallen angels and what are they doing? Well, let us be clear with demonic and fallen angel. The demonic have no body. They are an energy form that has no body and needs a body to indulge in its perversion. I've seen that. I know from doing the work that we do when we remove entities from people. The fallen ones, however, the fallen ones have a body, but they still behave as the demonic do and they still attach to people, but they seem to do it so they can have the energy. They seem to do it so they can use it as an avatar, so they can experience the 3D whilst remaining in a higher dimension. But they have a body, so there's, there's two parties here that I'm referencing with demonic and fallen angels. If the fallen angels of the Bible are sentient and they have technology, they may live profoundly long lives. Islam call them the jinn and say they live very long lives. Perhaps to a human their lives are almost eternal. Who knows? But if they live longer lives and if they have a need to extract this energy, they could wait for species all around the cosmos that are developing and, and growing. They could wait for them to reach a certain intellectual development. Or they could wait for them to be intellectually risen up by benevolent forces from other dimensions and other parts of the cosmos. And as they do, there they have a prize now. Now this species is technologically advanced enough that we can start tapping into the foundation of that which animates and moves their intelligence. And we may be able to get them to move their intelligence into a place whereby they extract the energy themselves that we need. If you are at war with God, the generous heart is pouring forth all things, then your very life essence, your soul essence, is also pouring forth from God. Now if you can understand therefore, I'm sure the generous heart is not going to pour energy freely into that which is manifesting from that state of consciousness because not everything in this reality for all coming from the generous heart gets the vote of God. I've seen this. We have those false awakenings in our culture. People have an awakening and say all is love, all is accepted by God. But Alistair Crowley said that. Do as thou will is the whole of the law, the whole of the law is love. That means you can love perversion and it's acceptable. But this is not true, for when you connect to the Christic, you see the generous heart allows all things and infinite potential for life to have meaning, but the mind does not agree with everything that's happening and moves to make changes. So not everything gets God's vote. They would need energy. And to get energy, they need humanity to separate from the origin of who they truly are. They need them to go from spirit, soul, into flesh. To get us into flesh in this world a hundred years ago, two hundred years ago, you really had to use things like alcohol, uh, prostitution and gambling. To drag humanity into flesh was not that straightforward. If you have a good man who's going to work, serving his family, it's not so straightforward to bring his children into flesh. Now, however, with the dawn of technology, if they have played the long game, watched and waited, with the dawn of technology, now you can put a device in everybody's hand, which is constantly dragging them into flesh. And this begins an alteration in the direction of the output of human intelligence dramatically. 
and that dramatic change can serve their ends. And so this cheap dopamine is to be watched. When you are sitting at home and you are gluttonizing on junk food and watching endless movies, this is not what you want. You want your destiny. You want adventure, joy, hope. You want love. Gluttony is a, a, a band-aid for satiating the void of love in your life. It, it won't fill it. It will never fill it. Only God can fill that. For God is home. When God created trees, he spoke to the soil. Soil is a tree's home. When he created fish, he spoke to the oceans. A fish is an ocean's home. Yeah, an ocean is a fish's home. And when he spoke to himself, he created humans. God is a human home. Cheap dopamine will keep you focusing your attention on mind and body, flesh, and it will keep you away from home. Sometimes fleeting, sometimes just an hour, two hours a day while you mindlessly scroll or whatever it may be. But it's enough to derail, to slow down your destiny. It's enough to enslave you and it's also enough to pollute your mind with corrupted imagery and images and notions and perceptions. And so when you give that to a child, you might as well hand your child to Satan. Because this is where they are going to end up. You're going to offer your child that. You're going to offer their perceptions to the culture and the culture is dominated by the fallen ones. Everything's acceptable. Pornography is acceptable. It's totally all normal, but it's corroding us. And so, I guess I will wrap it up there. If they've played the long game, not only with our species, but others, or other humans in different parts of the cosmos, who knows? If they have pr played that long game, then their desperate need is to keep you away from spirit, because in spirit you'll see them. You'll decode the bandwidth of consciousness and reality that you were supposed to. You will travel interdimensionally through the work of spirit. You will be protected by spirit as you do. For a human has not willingly separated from God. They have, and they've chose a home, and they are stuck in the dimension they are. You as a human in spirit can raise yourself in frequency to a higher dimension than what they can. And that is why in spirit you have dominion over the demonic. They are living from a higher dimension, and they are coming here. You must somehow climb through their dimension and into the higher dimension to bring the power of spirit through as a channel through your body into this world. You cannot do that if you are identifying with the five senses. And it's your master, which cheap dopamine is making possible. And so how do you get free from it? It's a very simple solution. You fast. You will be uncomfortable. But it's time to toughen up. You've got to toughen up. Fast a little. Fast on just water for a while to reset your addiction to junk foods. If it's dopamine, put down the dopamine. And when you feel the urge to scroll or to look at your pornography, go for a walk. Read something. Do some exercise. Whatever it's going to be to pass the time and give you more sustained dopamine. Because dopamine's not bad. Cheap dopamine is bad. Serotonin is even better when it's combined with, with true dopamine. Fasting creates resilience and resistance against it. And your intellectual compulsion to do these things is repentance. You offer a counter-program. When you do it and you fall or when you're about to do it, start repenting. Teach the computer of your brain because it's been taught and programmed in a certain way. Counter-program it. Counter-program the behaviors that are leading you into the flesh. 
And it's really quite easy to get away from cheap dopamine when you just embrace those simple, simple tools. It's very easy. And when you overcome cheap dopamine, you overcome what may well be a very long thought out plan by the adversary of humanity and God. For we are at a time where you can drag humans into the flesh and you can make them carry the item in their hand to do it. That means that we can digitally see that we are at this technological stage of development carrying something that can separate us from spirit every single day be it for an hour or be it for eight hours or be it all day long we're already used to this what happens when the technology advances eventually what does happen to the collective soul of humanity if we are constantly living as a species driven into the flesh and perversion which you start to see hints of manifesting inside the insanity and chaos of culture and society today. This satanic dopamine blanket, this cheap dopamine, it's a very serious spiritual warfare. But thankfully you have all of the cards and you have all of the power by simply saying no. God bless guys. Bye.